Consider a system having the impulse response h of n and the input sequence x of n. Part A. Use discrete time linear convolution to find the system's response to this input. Part B. Find the three point circular convolution of x of n and h of n. Part C. To what length n do you need to zero pad h of n and x of n so that time aliasing is avoided? We can rewrite h of n and x of n in shorter forms, ignoring the zeros at the end. And to perform that, the linear convolution, we can use Pierre's method. first term of h times all of the terms of x, then for the second term of h by all of the terms of x. And then sum. result y of n. Part b, we have to reformat our uh, input response and our input sequence. I'm sorry, impulse response. For a three-point circular convolution. X of n can remain the same, but we'll have to pad a zero back onto h of n, and also time reverse it. We start with one of our signals. And then we apply the other and rotate it. And multiply the h terms by the x and sum. making our three-point circular convolution to equal notice that uh, the three-point circular convolution was not equivalent to the linear convolution because there was not enough sampling for the circular convolution and alias occurred aliasing occurred so in order to avoid aliasing we need to make sure that the circular convolution output is the same length or larger than our linear convolution result. So the length of a linear convolution is the length of the uh, each signal, so our x was 3, and h was 2, that sum minus 1 equals 4. So our n is 4. We can perform an endpoint circular convolution by padding the appropriate amount of zeros.
time reversing one of our signals. Coincidentally, our original <clears throat> impulse response and input sequences were the perfect size. Again, we uh, sum the products. And our result is identical to the linear convolution.